What's up, Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Bite. We're bringing you all the good and bad stuff inside the world of Apple, and I just got back from E3 after some real intense gaming sessions. Now, WWDC is just around the corner, and we're expecting a preview of iOS 6 and more Mountain Lion, but what you want, what I want, more than anything else, is brand new hardware. And we could potentially see the rebirth of the Mac Pro after retail part numbers were tracked down for what's believed to be the next-gen Mac Pro after almost a two-year wait. Now, according to MIC Gadget, the Mac Pros will feature Intel Xeon E5 processors with either six or eight cores, native USB 3.0 and Thunderbolt support, 1600 megahertz memory support, and SATA 3 native connectivity, which will be a boost for solid state drives, which means it's finally time to upgrade. Upgrade, upgrade, please stop. That's so embarrassing. It's not, no. Okay guys, uh, well that discovery was then blown open wide by Apple Insider after a list of 27 new Apple part numbers with 14 of them appearing to be Mac hardware was sent to them by an Australian dealer with access to Apple's reseller system. It includes MacBook Airs, MacBook Pros, iMacs, and the previously mentioned Mac Pros, but it would really be a shocker to me and really uncharacteristic of Apple to announce all of these products at one time at WWDC. But how about this? If Apple announces every single one at WWDC, I will give Jim the shirt off my back next week. Brian, I wanted that so Yeah, that's uncomfortable. But guys, I'm sticking to what I said a few weeks ago. We'll see an iOS 6 preview, no iPhone, more Mountain Lion, and MacBook Pros and Airs at WWDC 2012. Now let's jump to iOS, and we've heard plenty of news about how Apple is planning to release their own maps in iOS 6. But at a recent Google event, they announced they're bringing their own enhanced 3D maps to both Android and iOS. Now it's coming soon, but this video shows that it looks pretty impressive, but it will probably be limited to Google Earth's app that I never use. So what else can we expect to see? A report by TechCrunch says that Facebook integration will finally be coming to iOS 6. Tim Cook hinted by saying stay tuned when asked about Facebook and Apple during his D10 interview but it's reported that it will be integrated in the same way Twitter is with iOS 5. Now you also know I've been pounding on Siri. We know we have to see a significant improvement, but 9 to 5 Mac reports that Siri plans to make its debut on the iPad with iOS 6. Their sources and mockups say it won't be a full screen experience, but it's unclear if it will be announced with the other iOS features. Now last week we also showed you pictures of what's claimed to be the next iPhone, but now a hands-on video with the part from E-Trade Supply shows us a little better comparison. Now there's nothing new revealed, but you can see the two-tone design which actually looks more attractive in video and a side-by-side -side with the iPhone 4S. Apple biters, I'm asking you, is this still a hoax or what do you think? Is this the real deal? Let us know. And also in more iPhone news, a KGI securities analyst claims the next-gen iPhone will have a thinner and improved front and rear cameras. According to their supply chain sources, it will have the first ever slimmed down rear camera while still retaining its 8 megapixel resolution and an improved f2.2 aperture. And then the front-facing camera will be HD to support its new 16x9 resolution, so we'll see how that all shakes out. All right, guys, Apple biters, get ready for WWDC. I know you're giddy. Apple won't be streaming it for you, but you'll be able to watch the live play-by-play -play right here at CNET with myself, me, your friend, and Donald Bell on Monday, June 11th at 10, and all the rest of CNET's live coverage. So that's going to do it for this week's show. I'm Brian Tong. Email us at theapplebite at CNET.com. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys next time for another bite of the apple.